First oral question, Lord Howarth of Newport, who is participating virtually. My Lords, while there are many business, uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name. Uh, my Lords, uh, green claims made by businesses should be clear and accurate and not mislead consumers who are increasingly looking to make environmentally friendly choices. The Competition and Markets Authority and the Advertising Standards Authority have published guidance to help businesses comply with the law when making environmental claims about their goods or services. If a business does not comply with consumer law, the CMA and other bodies, such as Trading Standards, can bring court proceedings. My Lords, while there are many businesses that are genuinely committed to the net zero objective, should there not be zero tolerance when businesses puff their publicity and their accounts with dishonest claims about their green credentials? Does the noble Lord the Minister accept that for those businesses, self-regulation will not work, that tough regulation and penalties are needed to deal with these fraudulent practices, and that the government must work urgently with international partners to establish standardized accounting rules, an end to bogus carbon offsets, rigor in the definition of ESG, and reliable and clear information for investors and consumers. Well, I understand the point that the noble lord is making, but businesses don't self-regulate in this uh, area. You know, the Competition Markets Authority, the CMA, has published guidance on environmental claims on goods and services, and they published that in September uh, 2021 to help businesses to understand how to communicate their green credentials whilst mitigating the risk of misleading consumers. The Advertising Standards Authority have also taken action against some businesses. May I draw attention to my registered interest? Does the Minister accept that there is a real pressure on productive agricultural land, particularly in Wales and Scotland? from the big businesses buying up such land and taking it out of production, and so adding to the food cost inflation. Does the Minister accept that perpetual increased afforestation encroaching on productive land is not an acceptable answer? It needs land use which sustains food production in an environmentally acceptable manner. That's it. Fascinating question from the noble lord. I'm not sure what's got to do with this subject under discussion, but I think it's, uh, it's a very real uh, issue, something we certainly need to keep uh, under uh, close examination because we don't want to see productive land taken out of use. Lord, the noble lord. Would my noble friend, the minister, be able to give now or later an estimate of the cost of ESG reporting to British companies? The reason I ask is the SEC commissioner recently stated that the cost of the 4,600 companies which they regulate of providing ESG reporting is currently at $2 billion and expected to rise to $8 billion with the new regulations. I know my noble friend is very interested in this subject. I know we've discussed this before, and it is uh, an important matter. The problem that we have is that many businesses, of course, are making um, uh, environmental claims about their sustainability and others. They're publishing information in their annual reports, uh, often voluntarily. There's no, uh, in some respect, no legal obligation to do so. So the question is how investors can get um, you know, transferability across different companies. How can you compare one company against uh, another? So I think there may be a case for some standardisation and regulations in this space, but of course we do need to look at the uh, business impacts. Lords, Labour, my Lords, my Lords, Labour, the no, Labour, the noble Lord has on, mentioned that the Competition and Markets Authority actually. Order, order. My Lords, I think it's the turn of the crossbenchers, followed by the Lib Dems, followed by Labour. My Lords, uh, would the Noble Lord the Minister agree that if we're to take action against claims of greenwashing, we need clear criteria and standards against which to judge those claims? Part of that, the Government has recognised, is the need for a green taxonomy. And as work has been done on this, and yet it seems to have been paused. We were promised uh, the results of the Working Party by the end of last year. So I wonder if the Minister could update us on progress on green taxonomy. Uh, uh, the noble lady is right, and we need some consistency on these uh, matters. Uh, the work on green taxonomy is taking, being taken forward by the uh, Treasury. 
and uh, as far as I'm aware, they are proceeding with it. My Lord. My Lords, last year the Advertising Standards Authority ruled that HSBC's greenwash ad, ads were not adequately qualified and left out material information about its greenhouse gas emissions. Does the Minister agree that a ticking off from the ASA after an ad has gone out is not a de deterrent? And will he request the CMA to incorporate this into their Green Claims Code so that financial penalties can be imposed if firms breach the rules repeatedly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, the ASA has uh, taken action against uh, a number of, of companies, including from one company that made uh, green artificial grass. Um, about their environmental claims. Um, but I think this is a, is a very real deterrent on, on businesses not to uh, repeat unfair uh, advertising. But I know that CMA are looking at a number of different uh, sectors. They've already published an investigation into the fashion sector, uh, and uh, they are moving on to their investigations onto other areas of the economy as well. The noble lord has mentioned that the Competition and Market Authority has actually issued its Green Claims Code which has the power to take errant uh, companies to court. Have any actually been taken to court? Uh, Noble Lord is, is right. The CMA have is, is published their guidance in September 2021. Enforcement of, uh, of unfair uh, claims and uh, misleading advertising is a matter for uh, trading standards. I'm not aware if any claims have been taken to court, but if, if there are any um, uh, actions that I can point the Noble Lord to, I will, of course, uh, write to him about it. My Lords, my lords um, tenant farmers face acute risk of greenwashing as landlords seek to take tenanted land back to access public and private markets. The Rock Review have already seen evidence of tenanted farmers in England being served notices to quit for this purpose. Can the Minister say what Government is doing to ensure that we support our vital tenant farmers and don't lose tenanted land from delivering food and environmental outcomes? Uh, I think the, my noble friend is right to point to this as an important uh, issue. Uh, it's not one which falls within uh, my uh, purview as a Bayes Minister, but I will certainly find out the answer to it and write to it. Um, greenwashing is um, clearly a serious issue which, if not clamped, down upon when it seriously hinder progress towards net zero, and we um, welcome steps being taken to do this. Um, for example, green taxonomy, increased ESG reporting requirements, investment product sustainability labels. All these measures should mean that communicating ESG credentials will become critically important to companies as well as compliance with the legal requirements. All steps in the right direction. Could the noble lord, the minister, outline the timeline? for their implementation and what assessment the Government has made of the impact that the currently proposed changes will actually make? Uh, well, there was uh, a lot of questions with what the noble lady has to say, and there are a number of different aspects to this uh, problem. Of course, the Advertising Standards Authority are, are taking action, the CMA are taking action. There were also some um, uh, commitments that we made in the net zero strategy uh, contained several commitments around eco-labelling, uh, working with the Financial Conduct Authority to introduce a sustainable uh, investment label, uh, and all those works uh, are proceeding uh, at the moment. I think it's well known that food and uh, agriculture and deforestation account for a very high amount of greenhouse gases and biodiversity loss, and yet, as a consumer, it's impossible to tell when you buy a product exactly what its biodiversity impact or its carbon content is. All big food companies rail against um, putting this on labels on the grounds that it would take up too much space. Fair enough. They can put it online where nerds like me can look it up and see if it's okay. What is the government doing about making labelling correct in terms of those two factors? Have they at least started a consultation and is there any news on when they might implement it? Well, the noble lady referred to looking at information uh, online, and uh, I'm sure she would be pleased to know that the CMA have launched a website for consumers to help them to identify and understand genuine environmental claims about products and services that they are purchasing. And the website is designed to encourage them to ask themselves simple questions about whether they can believe the claims uh, or not that manufacturers are making. Um, I was going to mention Amazon, that is a prime example of a, com uh, of a company that uses greenwashing. 
And um, in fact, I realise, of course, that the government is very much a greenwashing organisation because it constantly lords its environmental principles. And then the Prime Minister, for example, hops into a private jet to go to Leeds instead of taking the train like the rest of us. Does the Minister agree that the government needs to uh, correct some of its greenwashing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, I think there are all things that we could do. In fact, um, she talks about the Prime Minister taking uh, jets. She might want to talk to one of her Green Council colleagues, who I believe flew up to COP26 in uh, Glasgow. So I think there are always improvements that all of us can make in our personal behaviour.